flagship um, program for that university, the MBA program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moment. Moment. Phone. What are you on? Phone. phone. Okay. Moment. Well, my wife a phone. Ah. Okay. It's in my jacket, Kitty. And this is Kitty. She oh, yeah, is yeah. uh, Matthew's wife. Yes. She is from Korea, actually. And now she moved to it. Okay, uh, Kitty, come up here and say Matthew hello to, to the people Japan. Of the and Matthew has a property in Targovic. That's right. the connection with Bulgaria, actually. Okay, okay. So that's my, 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 my lovely wife, Kitty, from South Korea. Uh, right, yeah, so this is a, it's a business university. Uh, the university that uh, part that I teach in is uh, the undergraduate program. So um, I don't teach any um, uh, postgraduate students. I don't um, uh, mark any dissertations at the moment, although that can all change because we never know what's going on from one week to the next. Um, currently, uh, and the title of this um, uh, presentation today is uh, Student Generated Digital Media Products, which is kind of my special area, uh, in active learning environments. Uh, what this active learning um, approach is changing uh, pedagogy in, in Japan because what they have in Japan is they have what they call a Yutori uh, system, it's a very passive system. Somebody stands, like I'm doing here now, <laughs> somebody stands up and, and talks and people just listen. So it's a kind of like, um, I don't know, sometimes I think it's more the kind of behaviorist school of thinking. Yes, yes. Where um, one directed uh, communication, not... Uh, it is, one is... Uh, you don't change the, the role, the role, the positions. Right. I am in here, you are here. That's right. There's a very strong, big demarcation. But it is better line. to yeah. change the position, the, to take different roles, and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in, to develop your uh, yeah. thinking uh, in different uh, position because mm -hmm. you, you can uh, take different uh, points of view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for stereo, uh, stereoscopic mm. uh, picture. Yeah. Mm. So the uh, the problem with this is, is because they have used this style of education for so long in Japan, um, students, uh, society in general is, is lacking in critical and, and creative thinkers. So um, basically everything is kind of delegated to above because it's a very top-down system. It's, it's kind of similar in Korea and in to, some, to some degree China. More, and I think it's very typical of generally East Asia. So um, this, uh, there is a drive now by the Ministry of Education in, in, in uh, Japan to enforce more uh, active learning uh, environments. And um, what I've been doing is I've been working with digital video because it's a very kind of uh, way of shifting um, my role over to students to, to engage uh, uh, creatively and get involved more to play a more active role in their learning, and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that. Anyway, what I'm going to look at is just that I'll try and define what I mean by active learning and, and, and digital media uh, projects, and then we'll look at some of the theoretical frameworks uh, that are, are kind of current and uh, more, more in the digital media side, and then we'll look at things that I've been doing from uh, so moving from theory to practice, and then uh, current projects, proposals, and intentions, uh, things that I'm kind of working on and uh, I want to develop as part of my research thesis. And then we'll have a kind of discussion and uh, we'll conclude on what, what that generally means. Okay, so um, first of all, active learning environments. I've kind of made an acronym here. Um, I've got uh, AIL, 
Because I like that acronym, because mm-hmm. I like EL. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not active, active learning. Active learning, yeah. That is EL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, what is active learning? Well, again, this is another problem that they're facing in Japan, is because everybody has different ideas what active learning is. No, wow. Nobody can really underpin it. However, I'm going to try and just um, put it as I see it today, but obviously other people might argue it and it might be, and it's a very kind of subju- uh, subjective area. I mean, sitting on a bus, looking out a window, not think, uh, just thinking is active learning. You think, oh, it's raining outside. You're, you're learning, right? You're active. Yeah. So how do you define active learning, right? Okay, so um, from my point of view, and from some of the literature that I've been reading, uh, active learning, it's a kind of new rock and roll for education. It was very popular in Scotland recently as well. Uh, as I say, it's, it's moving forward in Japan. And basically it comes out, uh, it's just social constructivism in a nutshell. That's what it is. Vygotsky, uh, Vygotsky. ZPD are the, the zone of proximal development that people learn within an area, right? Either by listening or seeing or, or doing or, or getting involved, I guess. So I guess it's kind of uh, scaffolding. Uh, for my part, I like to see it as being a collaborative thing. It's not something that you, you, you smell, it's something that you can do alone. I mean, it, it does kind of foster uh, learner, learner autonomy. However, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's very much a, a, a team effort from, from, from my work anyway, from working in digital video. Um, how does this uh, normally, how this is normally implemented by task-based learning or a, a problem, yeah? yeah? So you might say the student says, here is, uh, like for example, a traveling university would be a good example where Ah, there's a problem here with this uh, demograph. Uh, there are various areas that are uh, of critical importance that need examining, observed, and then evaluated or some plan of action. Yeah. Okay. So um, active learning is, I would say, very much a. a a task-based learning um, activity that comes from, uh, uh, it could be, as I say, it could be on your own, so I don't want to say it, it, it's, it's totally collaborative, but it's definitely within the paradigm of um, the social constructivism. Um, again, as I say, although it's collaborative, it could promote learner autonomy because Everybody within the group might have a role within the group. All right. Okay. So if you're delegating roles, like a year ago, and uh, look into this, I will, I will, I will log the data, and there's a kind of uh, role sharing thing going on. Now, sometimes it's a very interesting thing because we don't know how groups work, right? Because sometimes there are very clearly divisions in the group. As there is in, um, in some of these books that I've read on uh, active learning, uh, there tends to be pods or segments within a, within a certain task or within a certain um, assignment, and sh- certain students work on certain parts. There's, there's, a kind of, uh, there's a kind of pro and con to that, because uh, the pro thing is, is that you can become quite specialist in that area, that particular, that one area. The other thing, the kind of downside to that is, is that you're not learning everything that everybody else is learning more yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's a good and bad, right? There's a plus and minus for it. However, I, I would like to think that even internally and in your own role, and also you're learning externally what the others are doing as well. So you get a general overview of the of the problem or of the task, etc. Um, another thing about active learning environments, and this is quite important now for further education or higher education in a sense because uh, of the, the changing nature of education, 
is that students really need to focus on learning real life skills. Mm. So that means that that's connected to these tasks. So you wouldn't give them a task that they're not going to use in the real world. What would, what would the point of that be? And this is why uh, there's a problem with a higher education at the moment while well, students and, and, and teachers are, are disillusioned by it. They think, why are we teaching flogging and all this whole stuff when it doesn't really have much kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, it's not relative to today's, to today's world, yeah? So um, we have to try and think that the skills that we're, we're helping students to empower them with are real life skills, or scenarios from a workplace or from an industry, or, 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 or again, uh, a deeper, a deeper style of thinking, something that can, that benefits society, yeah, okay? Uh, rather than the old traditional, you know, way. Okay, so um, the good thing about uh, active learning is it, it combines and incorporates uh, traditional and new forms, for example, technology and um, the traditional teacher and student, for example, right? You never, I'm not going to say you can never remove that because that, that we don't know what the future is going to be, but um, at present, uh, there are still a lot of the traditional um, skills that are, uh, that are uh, used in, in teaching that can still be applied to, to active learning. Um, however, uh, there is a lot of new things, new ways of teaching. For example, uh, teaching in clusters rather than uh, amphitheaters and stuff like that. Okay. Um, one thing that I've noticed, and this is kind of um, crucial to where we're going with this, uh, this study altogether, is that most research into active learning uh, environments focus mainly on classroom-based learning. All right? There doesn't seem to be a lot of literature to support uh, what happens outside the class. Because we can say, well, you know, there's some learning going on outside the class. We talk about flipped classrooms and blended learning these days. How do we know what's happening? How can we observe that? How do we know how people are learning beyond the class, all right? We kind of know how they're learning in class. I'm kind of giving them this information. I'm giving them these tasks. They're working on it. I can see him and her and da 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 So you can kind of get some kind of idea. But with the new style of education, people are going away, they learn things, and then they come back. So this, this is kind of a, a gray area at the moment, because we, we don't really know much about um, learning outside the classroom, which is an area I am particularly very interested in, more so than classroom-based education. Mm. OK. Um, so uh, that brings me nicely to what I've been doing in Japan with, uh, and Korea for some years uh, with students working with uh, digital media products. Now when I talk about digital media products, I mean not let's watch a movie. That could be part of it, but really what I mean is let's make a movie, all right? Let's make media, okay? And then my people want to say, well, well, why? That's just, it's like playing, it's not, it's not really higher education, is it? Well, it depends. Again, this is the, depends your definition in terms of the traditional method, maybe no. However, in the new kind of active learning environment, absolutely is. Yeah? Definitely. Okay? Uh, so the good thing about student-generated digital media products, whether they're good or bad, um, because you'll see some good mm. examples and some bad examples. Mm. Uh, but basically what we're looking for is that it demonstrates their subject knowledge. What have they learned? That's what we want to know, right? Mm. At the end of the day, as teachers. Mm. What have they learned? That's the, the bottom line, the sum total of everything, right? Um, 
So, so it might be uh, the, the, the subject knowledge, it might be, in my case, because I'm connected to language teaching, it might be the, the depth of language, vocabulary, mm -hmm. use of grammar, etc. Uh, also, how they deal with things in terms of uh, concepts, are they creative, are they, are they asking questions? Yeah? yeah, or are they just merely, um, you know, um, explaining something that's kind of common knowledge? All right, okay. So um, th there are interesting things that that manifest mm. from a, a, a digital media product, and of course, it's our, our role really is to to guide, and develop, and procure these things. That's what we are trying to get from students. So, so it's when we say active learning, it's not just the students that should be active. Of course, the teachers have to be active too, right? Ah, this is when we have it's difficult to be active teacher. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it is. especially with younger people who have, uh, you know, there's generation gaps and things. How do we work together as a, you know? We're from different, there are generation gaps, there, there might be, you know, uh, young people have more energy or they might want to do wild and increase their ideas and you say, oh, no, 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 you, you want to try and keep it simple because we all, we're always saying that to students. Oh, don't do that. Tr just try and keep it simple. Sometimes you have to step back, Valerie, you say, yeah, okay, go and do it. Show me. Because that's, this is what you want to see, right? And if they, if it falls flat in its face, that's a good thing as well. You say, well, what did you learn from that? That's, that's, the, that's the thing. It's not always about making a good media product. When it works, it's great. It's, you can put it up there and you go, wow, that blew me away. Well done, guys. Great. And then the others put all this money in there, kind of like, oh, it didn't work. Great ideas. And you say, well, let's see the, let's return to writing then. Let's return to reflection. Let's do, go to reflective journals. And then you can see, wow, they learned a lot. They, they tried to do a lot, and now they realise that they were do, trying to do too much in too much short time, or blah blah blah, whatever. Or the um, they didn't have the budget for the effects or something like that. Right? Okay. So they'll, they'll, they'll learn something from it. That's guaranteed, right? And that's basically what we're looking for. So, um, however, as you said, trying to keep it simple. Um, we also want them to reach attainable and realistic learning goals and outcomes. So you don't say to them, look, I want a Hollywood masterpiece by uh, next Friday. Okay, off you go. No, no. That's not a realistic or uh, It has to be, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier in the, in the social constructive sense. These things, they have to be staged bit by bit because not only are they, in my case, the students are learning in a, not only they're learning in another language, they're also learning other technical skills. All right? Probably skills they've never used before. Or some, some may, some may not. If they have, that's almost handy because they help the others. And that's the great thing about yeah. social constructivism, right? So, um, yeah, so I engage students in a meaningful uh, knowledge construction. It can be designed to fit within an, uh, uh, a learning, um, an active learning environment. Because I, I think when you actually assign somebody a task like uh, make me a small documentary about uh, elderly people living downtown or octogenarians in uh, Japan, the, the population problem, all this kind of thing, You've got yeah. three weeks. I mean, you have to give them three, four weeks to do some research, to get used to the tools. However, once, once they've made one or two or three, they actually, they, they get better, as you would expect, right? It's all about, it's, it's a learning curve. It's developmental, right? So, um, there's been a bit, quite a lot of uh, theoretical frameworks. Uh, I've managed to dig some out. And this is uh, one from Barrett. did some uh, research into electronic portfolios, which is interesting as well from an environmental point of view because 
We're, we're, we're trying to move towards a paperless society. Everything's all electronic. It's stored on a, a cloud, or it can mm -hmm. be sent to me. It can be sent. I can send it to a colleague. The, the students can share it with each other or to a much wider audience. But this is basically this. This is uh, because most of the research. And, and digital media technology nowadays is being done mainly in digital storytelling because that's a big one for education because there's the, they're very short films and they're kind of personal narratives and stuff like that. So this, um, this, there's a lot of research done on that. Not extensive, but there's, there's quite, been quite a bit. And basically this is the learning that, that goes on within that club to, to vary um, e-portfolios. But as I say, they've used it for digital storytelling. But, um, Robbie goes further with the framework, and he suggests that in his TPK, and um, this is theory, pedagogy, content, and knowledge. So all that learning that's taking place within the students, not just within the students, within the teachers, within the classroom as a community. All right? It's not just the, it's not just the students, right? Every, every place of learning, it has to be a community of practice between, between the, uh, the lecturers and, and the students. All right? Because you're, you're basically uh, uh, assuming the role as a guide, a facilitator. You're the kind of host of that space. You're only there really mm -hmm. to, to supervise them and to sort of like be on hand to help them as and when they need it. If they don't need it, just step back and let go to it. <laughs> All right. And, um, I, I, I can send you the, the articles for this, but that's... Yeah. It's just uh, okay. So the kind of uh, that, that, that last slide kind of uh, talks about more about the the, the theoretical part uh, in terms of the mechanics of the learning. This here now, Rossiter and Garcia and Lambert with these seven elements of uh, digital storytelling. Um, they're moving more to something a little more abstract, to the experience, right? Self-direction, yeah. student voice, yeah? That means within, yeah. that, that's within the content. Yeah. Of course, it's within, it's within the TPCK uh, thing, right? It's, it's in the content part, but it's an important part because it's the overall message of what this, what the, the learners are trying to project. All right. It's not just um, the knowledge, there might be something else in there that's more hum human, you know, yeah. and a more uh, hum human. Actually, I, I, I read uh, an article recently that actually suggests that um, digital storytelling, again, uh, could be um, a signature pedagogy for the new humanities. I can't remember who it's by, but it, it, it was quite an interesting paper. I read that. Um, however, I'll rewind back to this. Um, this uh, the students as kind of, I guess, filmmakers or as communicators okay. mm -hmm. of these seven elements. Point of view. All right, the point of view of the. Uh, but you can you give me some example about this um, uh, first, first this, one, yeah. uh, per, uh, what is puff in uh, the real life example of dramatic question, what kind of question? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so a dramatic question, um, right, okay. So uh, the a point of view might be, um, I think that the medical science is not doing yeah. enough for humanity. Okay, that's my yeah. point of view. So my dramatic question would be, why are there so many people 
suffering with cancer, and we have all this technology, yeah. and we have all this knowledge, and we have blah, 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 blah. That would be a very powerful, dramatic question, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay? So, um, again, then it gets into the emotional part of that. People die, and, you know, it's a yeah. very sad thing, you know. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's painful. Of, of course, you know, I mean, but, uh, the small girl. Yeah, 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 all that thing. Family members and all this stuff, you know, not just even, yeah. even, even pets, or if you like, you know. Um, they give the voice, meaning that they have these tools, that they have a voice, that they have opinions and views within yeah. them that need to come out. Yes. All right, sometimes higher education in the traditional sense does not allow that. All right, and that's probably a fundamental a flaw of where, of where we're going wrong in a sense. Yeah. All right. So that, that, that could be another uh, critical question for, for, for an alternative pedagogy in higher education. Yeah. Soundtrack, of course, the music, the sounds, oh. yeah. The economy, that means not. <laughs> I might be, might be overloading with images that's yeah. just overwhelming and that's the effect yeah. you're trying to get. Or it might be something very simple, like a wave crashing on a, on a beach yeah. or something. So again, we're looking more at the, the visual language there. Again, maybe the dialogue or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Some of the best films that we have in our student film festival, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, they have very minimum dialogue, probably because the students English is not yeah. their first language, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to see them using more yeah. uh, dialogue, but uh, sometimes the, the, the films themselves, in terms of voice, and the questions, and the emotion, and all the other elements, are in there. They're really, really and I'll show you some in a minute if I get time. So, and the pacing, you know, how, does it go on too long, or is it, was it too short? You know yeah. what I mean? So, and uh, again, just to reiterate, what what is being what is being learned in here is the technical and creative skills. All right. Not everybody's a born writer, but some people might be very good at visual language with a camera. All right. And digital storytelling or uh, digital uh, media products in terms of video incorporates all these things. Computers, capturing images, putting music in there, sometimes putting the right music in, the right soundtrack. Mm -hmm. When you think about Trainspot, it was a great movie, right? Mm -hmm. Why was Trainspot a great movie? Because it was a great soundtrack. That was I it. Said, uh, <laughs> I said that uh, you mentioned this movie, it, it is something like synchrony. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's a great film in itself because it, just, it, it actually, in, in a kind of black humorous kind of way, uh, approached a very serious issue that was happening in, in Scotland yeah. at that time. Yeah. Um, so, again, this is another reason why you should just sometimes let students run with ideas. Go with it, do it with it. Let's see what you can do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, and 21st century skills. All the communication that's taking place now across Facebook, across blogging, everybody, you know, oh, Donald Trump is, uh, you know, I, I seen a, a really nice picture of him the other day there in this magazine and he was uh, dressed up as Elvis and stuff like that. It was a kind of a photo montage, very, very cleverly done. Actually, I've got it on my, my phone somewhere. But, um, these things, the amount of communication now, electronic communication, it's a massive part of our life now. Yes. And Peter's doing some kind of sadness there. I walked through the, um, the bibliotheca yesterday with my wife and they have this uh, book sales and stuff like that. I mean, I, I still think there is still a, a place for books. I mean, I was reading a book mm -hmm. on the plane because they say switch off your electronic devices. I said, why don't okay. you just go to books then, yeah? Yes. You know, and it's uh, okay, it's not a not big deal, I'll just go to book. Um, but, but the, um, we, we, mm. can't, we can't escape the fact 
Но втория пише си на татча кисили. И живеем в диджитал век. Живеем в диджитал комуникационен век. Так как мы берем это... Take this from from theory to practice, because now we know in theory that this kind of pedagogy has a lot of really interesting and exciting elements for learning, right? And teaching as well. I like to think it, we can't leave the teacher out of the equation. As I say, it's, we must. It's about both of them. Pedagogy encompasses everybody, or the whole, the whole, not just. The, the materials and you know the the approach and the strategies and all these things and the teachers and the students they're all part of the pedagogy. Hi, Ruddy, how are you? Fine, thank you. And you? Yeah, good, 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 good. You're just getting to the good bit now. We've just finished the boring part of the theory. Now we're going to look at the practice. <laughs> Great timing. Okay, so um, so. We have to try and think, how can we move this from, from theory to practice? So, the one way is, is just to tell the students, go ahead and do it. But there has to be clearly defined uh, objectives, uh, learning outcomes, etc. So that's basically the role of the, 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 the teacher is designing the, the syllabuses, etc. Now I'm going to show you uh, just some of the work from our website, from um, the Wild Fox Film Festival. The Wild Fox Film Festival was started before I went to that university, and I was already dabbling in this kind of area, and uh, then I, I got this job in Japan. They said, we want you to supervise this, uh, be the chair, chair of the committee for this uh, Wild Fox Film Festival. And um, so, oh, yeah, yeah, wait a minute, I'll just rewind there. So, developing a pedagogy, basically this is, this is it. There are three main stages for, for a digital media product. There are actually four nowadays, because when you get to sharing on various digital platforms, blah, 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 blah. So I would say that there's the, this is the making of the product itself. However, the distribution and exhibition of the products, just as exciting. And um, that is, uh, actually, now let's see. Let's have a look at this website. And this is the website for, it was made by some students at uh, NUCB, the uh, University. And um, they made uh, movies. And that's basically what it is. So I'll just show you some, uh, do we, we, we don't get sound, no? We don't have audio, no? No, no, that's okay. I don't get it. Okay, well, I'll, I, will, I will speak it and then... <laughs> 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 I'll do the music. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, this is a... Psychopath, yeah, this is a film about... Uh, again, you could read some kind of uh, real-life context into this. This is a, a gunman gone wild on the campus and the students are trying to lock themselves in and he's like, I don't like this class and uh, they have a fight and all that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a fun thing going on, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's just the one bit. So we have different categories. Um, the categories that we have are normally drama, um, Obviously, we can't tell them to go out and make a, a feature film, although they can do it and then send it to me, and if it's any good, I'll produce it. <laughs> and give up my career in academia. <laughs> no. But uh, yeah, but normally it's just about 15, 15 minutes in, uh, in length because obviously we try to give enough screen time to, to most of the students. Documentary is an area that I'm particularly interested in. Uh, digital storytelling, what we mean by that is it's just a kind of smaller three to seven minute normally it's a kind of personal narrative using like cell phones and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Images. And uh, let's, uh, so yeah we have we have some, we've had some documentary entries. Oh let me let's see um 
practicality. Yeah, uh, so not only do students get to make films, they can also make a poster. This is, pretty, this is particularly popular with the freshman year because they're off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we need that off uh, MGM. Yeah, but we put student film contest and a little fox in there. And uh, this is the, the kind of, uh, some of the, just some of the kind of products that they've been working on. We don't put them all in there, but some of the And um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, this site um, was made by our students. Yeah, so we had the film festival and I had a media studies class and I said, okay, let's, they made some videos and then in the second semester they made the, the website for the, uh, for the film festival, the school bought the domain, wellfoxfilmfestival.com, they went to work, I had to study how to do it and then I, again, as I said earlier, you just let them get on with it and then you try and say to them, do you, why, why, is, why is he bigger than that? And he said, oh, because I'm more important. Well, oh, okay, we <laughs> didn't change it anyway, but I didn't tell him to try and crop it. But he's graduated now anyway, I can't really reprimand him. <laughs> so, uh, and, um, yeah, so this is from our, our last school festival. I'm just trying to find, this is uh, made by some uh, Fre French um, exchange students and it was called Guide Your Rush. Oh, you can hear some sound on this. Okay, so they're talking about the difference in the cultural differences between uh, Japan and France. Mm -hmm. And again, they, they had never made a, a film before, so and they, they said that that was the best part. That was the best part of their uh, experience was doing this, you know. And they get to play with digital effects, you know. They've got the go out and film Japan and so, so that people can see it in context and um, that kind of thing. And you're talking about smoking, people don't smoke in Japan, uh, openly in public and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's... Although they do at night time but not in the daytime, it's a kind of strange one. <laughs> okay, and then they start the good thing about this was they got a chance to use their Japanese skills. They could interview yeah. people in Japanese, and then they could translate it into French and then into English, and then they yeah. put a subtitle on here. Okay, so that's that. Um, so you get the general idea of, of what what students can do. It's, it's really long, so we don't need to watch all. Okay. Oh, how do I? Um, escape, I think. I think it's escape, isn't it? But it's not escaping. <laughs> um, well, there's not a button down there, right? Ah, ah there okay. Go. Okay. Um, these are our undergraduate students, and it could be something really simple. These are my students, and they're talking about. And then you have to apologize to your boss about being late and... Okay, so this is a kind of... This example is more in the, the digital story kind yes. of area. So that's normally what we do with the freshman students, with exchange students. Uh, normally we try to get them to make something a bit more extensive and uh, adventurous. Okay. And as you can hear, their English is not... Some of them, the, the differentiated levels of uh, English learning are very uh, disparate yeah. in classes. I, I don't know what they are like in uh, Bulgaria, but normally you get some students who you can tell them, okay, we're going to do this, and they're like, oh, okay, and another one, they're like, 
<laughs> just you tell her. <laughs> and then they, they kind of work together. Yeah. And that's, uh, again, it's scaffolding, it's how they learn, it's social constructivism. Uh, we had some students who made a, a documentary about their travel in Japan. They were from Saudi Arabia. Okay. And it's in Arabic, but they put in English subtitles and Again, it's very good because this, these guys, they, they really use the visual language of the, the, in a kind of more poetic kind of way than just actually telling information. <laughs> and they did it all in black and white and, you know, to create uh, aesthetics mm -hmm. and, and so on. Uh, are your students these Arabian ones? Ah, yeah, 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 they are, they are undergraduates. And that was my media studies class, and they, they did a, a UFO movie about alien abduction on the campus. Okay, I saw a beam of light from the sky, then he disappeared, and, you know, and then another one a documentary, a history of car, about Nissan's GTR and all this guy. You get, you get, you get all kinds of stuff to yeah. do with their own interests. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's another thing about, and there, there's one with me in it. <laughs> Where is it? I did one because she never had a the girl. She never had a partner for her yeah. assignment. So I said, okay, I'll I'll help you. And uh, this one was, my wife was in. Um, Yeah. My wife was in, um, the power the, of the soundtrack. The, the power of the soundtrack, yes. <laughs> this is our uh, international center. Did you see this kitty? Uh, this film. There's my wife. And it's to do with a unit that they're studying in a, a textbook no, and so. that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yes. What do you recommend? Well, Matt, you are a great actor. <laughs> I didn't know about this kind of talent. suggests about learning the piano and all this kind of thing and I'm like how can I learn the piano she's like oh you can watch YouTube videos I've got some old magazines you can borrow and all this kind of thing all right so um, basically what you're trying to do with uh, well, what I'm trying to do in, in particular with my uh, undergraduate students is is try and create a culture of it because they're, they're coming from these uh, Yutori uh, style education schools where they sit in rows and you know the teacher goes around with a stick up and then oh, yeah. you know like the old school like they did in the 70s when uh, when I was uh, when I was a high school student I hated that uh, that style of education it's like the most worst style of education it's a prison in a sense you know so um, and who would like to be in prison I'm Scottish people we love freedom you know yeah uh, so. I'm trying to find uh, a pedagogy that liberates people and empowers them, and, and, and that's, that's the, the whole idea. Yeah. So uh, just generate a culture where students can get involved actively. And as I say, it's not something that you have to be over the top of them all the time teaching. You can stand back, yeah, go ahead, go do it, and bring it to me, let me look at it. Surprise me, that kind of thing. Sometimes they are a surprise. No, it's a nice surprise. 
But um, sometimes it's, it's good. Most, most times it is, anyway. Uh, so current pro uh, projects that I'm working on at the moment. Um, unfortunately, due to the uh, rules of our university, I can't take students outside of class. If they're paid to come to university, they've come to a university class in communications, they're not allowed to go outside. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring in a green screen and I'll bring the outside in. Do you know what I mean by green screen, Valerie? Mm -hmm. This uh, chroma key effect in the movies where they have a green oh. screen. And they can be in a cafe, they can be on top of a uh -huh, mountain, yes. snow and The thing. background here. On the yes, the yes, <coughs> exactly. So I, I'm, next semester I'm going to be using green screen. I bought a drone camera. I got it at a second hand store and it's, yeah. it works. <laughs> but I'm terrible at flying it, and I was, but I think the students yes. could get really into it. <laughs> so when the students actually start being more adventurous with products, how will their language develop? I don't know, but I'm, waiting, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to, to see how that works. Also, wardrobe. Now, this was something I didn't think about before, but then one day, I gave uh, some girls uh, an assignment. I was about school uniforms. Uh, one was the principal, and the other were the students, and they were debating whether uh, they should have uh, school uniforms in this, this Japan, etc. And they, um, one of the girls started wearing a suit and a moustache. And I thought, oh, students have never done that before. They're wearing wardrobe now. They're wearing costumes. And they loved it. They loved making that. Yes. The more creative and the yes. more engaged in the role play mm -hmm. they were, incredible the results. They loved it. Very, they respond very positively. Um, not so much in the evaluations, as <laughs> as positive as I want to, but uh, they, they, they're very happy, happy about, about the things that they're doing. Anyway, uh, I'd like to do more animation. That's an area I haven't really worked on, but there are uh, programs, uh, software, apps, for example, you can download and they can make an animation. I'm not too bothered if, if I don't see a student talking. Because I really want to see the message, the voice, the, the point of view, uh, their ideas, etc. Although sometimes I do want to see them speaking as well. So that, that's a kind of a for, for a language for a language pedagogy, it's kind of great because then you don't know if they're reading or speaking. And then when are you re when you're reading, are you speaking? It's, it's pretty much the same thing again. That's another debate. Um, Another thing, idea, to rewind to what I said earlier, is there's been very little research in experiential active learning environments. Very little research in it. It's all been classroom based. So my idea here is to do an experiential international documentary project in conjunction with the Traveling University. Because the Traveling University is a very unique pedagogy in itself. It's not classroom based. <coughs> it's tax based learning normally, right? Yes. We're not always over students. They, they, they have that kind of. And it's not like a classroom. It's not like they can go to this wall, that wall. There is no walls. There's a whole village. There's a whole town, you know? They can, they can, they can go to town. Pink Floyd, we like traveling uh, Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, like, I, I like this idea because it's, uh, it's experiential. And uh, what we know is from, from uh, Jimmy, remember Chinese Jimmy? Jimmy, he just loved it. He loved it. Now, I'm not saying that, that would work, it, works for, it worked for him, it worked for every student. But I'm curious. And I want to see what more happens when you put more in. Especially Japanese students. So as I say, they're notoriously shy. So. It could be it could be interesting, um, and to do that, as I say, we have to work on yeah. a, a, a project development. They have to, the Ministry of Education who stamp these things. They have to see very clear uh, guidelines and learning outcomes, yeah. etc. You know the usual that are kind of paperwork and stuff. So um, that's that. That's basically what I'm thinking at the moment. So, in conclusions, sum up, uh, I think 
And again, I'm being subjective and, and personal, and I, and I hope I manage to convince you that, uh, that there's a very valid case for research in the practicum, in the practice of uh, doing digital video, um, in, in environments, in an active learning environment. Okay? Uh, yeah. And definitely more uh, within a pedagogy that is not limited to classroom-based mm -hmm. studies. Because the changing nature of higher education is more people are learning more outside the class now than they are inside it. Maybe the class is just a place to touch base. This is what the class is for now, is to sit around and talk and discuss ideas of what we're going to do out there. All right? That is, that is the way higher education is probably going to go in the next five to ten years anyway. It's an inevitable. I hope so. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. We I mean, try, we try so to make it together it, happen. It's very personal, but I, I think it's the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in my view. We talk about flipped classrooms, blended learning. Go away, learn, come back, tell me yeah. what you've learned. That's all it is. I mean, the, the university is becoming a place where you just touch base. All the learning has been done outside. It's not yeah. this conventional mm -hmm. stick and chalkboard mode method anymore, right? There might be for things like mathematics, obviously, right? <laughs> but for other things that require um, real life learning, it needs to be yeah. in the real world. Absolutely. But again, there's a case for the classroom. I don't want to say that the, the, the days of the classroom are over, because that, I, I, I can't say that conclusively anyway. But with virtual apps and online courses and things like that, it's, 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 kind of, it's going to be very interesting how, how things change or how things go. So uh, digital communications both on a local level, whether it's you know, my students in my class, and your students in your class, or on a global level, when you're looking at an international uh, this project, this would be great on the global level. Many, on class, the global many universities to use the digital communication in this kind of stuff that was impossible maybe uh, 20 years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. but now are possible, and we didn't use it for this that uh, are very important to mm. uh, make some kind of international learning. Uh, in uh, real time, mm -hmm. here and now, mm -hmm. and this would be great for me to use this digital kind of learning, mm -hmm. because it's, there is no se uh, use, there is no sense to uh, make it only with your students, so and you can make a communication all over the world and Absolutely. with this kind of technology. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I, I think that uh, an another, another interesting point that you, you made there was when I went to university in the 90s as an undergraduate, when I turned on the internet, that was all the internet yeah. was for. It was for academic, for getting information. Yeah. And then it went kind of into the social world, into the commerce, into yeah. business. And now we have to try and turn it back around again. Not so that, yeah. but so that it does, uh, the, the uh, global education in a sense, sharing as a community of practice. That is going to be the way forward. It's not about, this is, this is my fifth term, this is my little area, I'm going to research this, and I'm, I'm not going to tell anybody, and then I'm going to throw it out to the world, and then I'm going to collect all the, all the money, and run away, <laughs> and all this kind of thing. This is, um, mm. this is a kind of like, a once upon a time, maybe for yeah. somebody who's developing a, a drug, or something yeah. like that, of course, you know, you, oh, you don't want you know, other yeah. universities to know. But in the humanities, it's, it's not like that. The humanities, what we're saying is, this is something that can empower and uh, benefit people. This is benefit society. And that is the, that is, that is the whole object of uh, higher education, is it not? I mean, am I, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> students in my university wouldn't agree with me. They say, no, it's to get a job. I was to get a job with good money. If I don't go to university, I don't get a job with good money, so that's why I'm here. I said, well, what about this, the feeling, the part in the middle? You know, don't care about that, I just want the paper. Which is fair enough, if that's their motivation. However, there are 
Well, I think that we can we can change the the paradigm round yeah. that it's not a kind of boring stuff in old place. It can be something really exciting where people grow and develop their their minds, their ideas, and have a, an effect on the, the wider society. So, so, so that's, that, that's that. If you guys get anything to say or any questions or anything else you want to ask, and there's the, there's the references for that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Well, it would be good to have some comments or questions. So. People we, we ask here. So the lady first, maybe the ladies uh, <laughs> I like your presentation, and uh, I think that uh, your idea uh, has to be implemented in our uh, science uh, practice because our uh, seminars are. Uh, in uh, uh, our organizing uh, hierarchy mm -hmm. system, yes. not in this kind of uh, active learning or mm -hmm. active, uh, active learning environment. <laughs> I, I don't like to hear someone, uh, but he knows something and I mm -hmm. don't know nothing. Yes. So I, Prefer to communicate with the lecture mm -hmm. to be. Uh, and I, I want to be active, and he again I don't. He uh, reject and uh, he, uh, to, to change the the, the roles. Mm -hmm. I am active, you are passive, and uh, you are active, and, but not in the uh, sexual. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, I think that what, what, what is interesting what you say, Valerie, because once upon a time when people were learning anything, there was a kind of um, apprenticeship model where the apprentice kind of observed the, the expert or the craftsman and uh, over time learned these skills. But the thing is, the apprentice doesn't become the craftsman or craftsperson, let me put it right, by um, by just observing. Yes, you, you can't just you observe. You have to be practical. And this is the thing about for, for students, they need to engage more. And I think there needs to be, uh, well, this is for the sciences in, in, in particular, for, for biology, chemistry, even uh, demonstrating ideas, uh, we've, we've got a kind of how-to videos where uh, students show how to make a cake or how to make a, a origami or something like that, right? So um, there, there is a model for, for science and there's quite a lot of literature actually for, for, for biology, a lot of biology teachers using digital stories for, for students to present uh, projects, etc. So it has a, a digital storytelling and uh, digital video or media production, it has a very wide um, application mm -hmm. for various uh, education disciplines. It's not just for humanities and social science. It's, um, although it, it seems to really work very well for, for, for humanities because, uh, because of the emotional content and how it actually connects to, to real life and all this kind of thing, yeah? So, uh, yeah, but I think what well, well, Valerie said is a very valid point. In fact, that when you're, when you're working with students, and there's a tendency in, I don't know about in Bulgaria, but definitely in Japan, more so than Korea, actually. Sometimes a, a student would say, excuse me, I want to say something. Okay, go ahead. No problem. And then it, what they were saying might even be, I don't have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. But that's a very good point. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting thing, something to think about. Uh, so, in, in Japan, they would be, they wouldn't want to challenge the expert. They wouldn't want to say, well, well why is it because of this, that, that is that? Why is it because uh, we have all this wealth and there's people starving in Africa? You'd, 
you're the economist, tell me. And I would say, well, you know, I know about the mechanics of economics. I know how the monetary system works and uh, various different, you know, um, theories. But really, I don't have an answer to why there are people, uh, you know, living in poverty still. Yeah. If I knew that, then I wouldn't be, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know, maybe you still would be teaching, I guess, because you would want to keep mm -hmm. a good system maintained, right? Um, so sometimes the student might ask a question and you can say, well, you have to be honest and say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. But in Japan, if you said, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer, it would be kind of, you don't know the answer. <laughs> it's like the, the Wizard of Oz, yeah, you know? Yeah, you know, all the answers in the world. Yeah. Same yeah. kind of it's goddess, you know, all the things yeah. in the world, in the universe. But, but then what ends up happening? Put them in the as, as a result of that, what ends up happening is a, a lot of, a lot of um, uh, professors, they, they, they won't turn around and say, well, I don't know, in Japan. They would probably say, well, there are various reasons and then they might point that out. And then, but there's kind of like, there, there might be a time where they might just say, I don't know, I don't know, because I don't understand Japanese and I don't really know, understand how their, their lectures work. But I, there is a drive now, as I said earlier, for more active learning, not just in, not just in the language arts, in everything, economy, in business, And I think, to, we had this film festival and there was no students on the, chip, the committee. It's a really strange thing. A really weird thing. I said, so, okay, so I'm going to be the chairman of the committee. Uh, uh, Professor Diane and uh, Professor um, uh, uh, Figure together usually we'll organize this uh, event for the students in and I said, wait a minute, we're organizing events for this. Why, where's the student body? Is this a business school? Surely you would want to engage students in project management, events management. Mm -hmm. That's business, right? I said, so maybe there's not much money being made. Or maybe they could sell snacks or something, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe they could sell t-shirts or something. I, I don't know, or they could sell something. <laughs> even if it's just, um, even if it's, uh, if there's no money involved, even that's even better, you know. Uh, maybe as an incentive to get students to attend, maybe that might be a kind of uh, a, a business model. But um, they were kind of like surprised when I said that. Let's get the students involved. It's their event. They'll tell us what kind of event they want. Better more than.